53. The Star. I swear by the stars when they dim, and by the gradual revelation of this Qur'an, your companion Muhammad is not deluded, nor has he suffered from mental harm. He does not speak of his own desire. The Qur'an is a revelation that he received from angel Gabriel, my mighty servant, who has great strength indeed. He is the one Muhammad saw on the horizon, the one beautifully created in every way. He was the one who came to the Prophet and passed on what to say. And when Muhammad told the Meccans of seeing angel Gabriel, they mocked what he did relate. Why argue of what he saw when you were not there? His heart did not lie or deviate. And then a second time he saw Gabriel on the night journey through the levels of heaven and again saw Gabriel at the low tree by the throne at the top of the seventh level. That's the boundary for the angels and prophets near the garden where martyrs' souls reside. He saw him when the tree was covered in gold and angels and light. And he saw Gabriel's six hundred wings and many other of God's supreme signs. He was not mad. He speaks the truth. He was firm and true in his sight. Martyrs are made up of many people, those who die fighting in the way of the Lord indeed, and those who are scholars, and those who die of drowning, and those who die defending their property, and those who die from being burnt in fire, and the mother who dies giving birth to, and the one who dies defending their family, or dies in seeking some godly means, for them all martyrdom is due. Disbelievers, do you consider the idols Allah al Uzza or Mana to be of any help in the hereafter? Belief in any other than God on that day will bring you nothing but complete disaster. And you consider daughters to be a humiliation, and you mock that God has daughters while you have sons. But by your twisted logic, how could the Almighty have what you regard as the lesser ones? The idols are simply made up things that you and your forefathers invented yourselves. They have no power, and those that believe they do follow their whims and nothing else. They do this even though God has sent guidance, saying this life and the next belong to him. Yet you carry on with your foolish ways, and you believe the angels and the idols will be interceding. And though there are many angels in the heavens that will wait for God's permission to intercede, they know they cannot help any soul other than the ones with whom God is well pleased. The disbelievers give the angels female names and say they are daughters of the Lord. They've no knowledge, they simply guess, and guessing against the truth is flawed. Disbelief will not prevail against the truth, so ignore those who turn from this revelation. They only desire the life of this world, their knowledge is stagnant at that station. God knows best who strays and who is guided, all the heavens and earths belong to the Lord and he'll repay evil with evil and good with good from the actions that people have stored. You who avoid major sins and repent the smaller ones, know that your Lord is vast in mercy. He knows all you'll do. He created you. He brought you from your mother's belly. Therefore do not boast of how good you are, or absolve yourselves from sins you commit. God knows best who is mindful of him. He is well and truly aware of it. Prophet, did you see the man who said, I now believe in God, but then returned to disbelief? As another said, I will bear your sins, so follow our idols. And he listened to the other person's lies and deceit. Does that person have knowledge of the unseen, showing others can bear sins for him? Can he see the hereafter and what will happen there? Or has he been tricked by a disbeliever's lying? Has he not been told of the scriptures of Moses and Abraham? They spread the word of the Lord that no soul can bear the burden of another, and each man will have what he works towards. His deeds and intentions will all be seen, and he will be repaid in full for all he has done, and know the final destination is to your Lord, the Creator, the Shaper, the Almighty One. It is he that will make people laugh when standing, overjoyed amongst the pleasures of the garden, and he that will make people cry in remorse as they head to hell with no chance of a pardon. It is he who gives death in the realm of this world, and he who gives life again at the resurrection, the day when some will have eyes downcast with shame, and some will have God's reward and protection. It is he who created the male and female, from the sperm and egg that go into the womb. He will make the life after the resurrection, while some have glory, some will have doom. 
It is he that gives wealth and possessions, and he is Lord and creator of the serious star, the one that the idol worshippers worship, and it is he who punishes from Ad and Thamud and every idolater. And before them he destroyed the people of Noah, who were even more rebellious in their sin, and he who devastated Sodom and Gomorrah, by a mighty hailstorm they were shaken. He did this through commands to Gabriel, so which of your Lord's blessings do you deny? This is a warning for you to take immediate heed, like the warning sent in previous times. The resurrection is near, and none knows of its time, except for the Lord alone, and yet you mock the Qur'an that the Prophet brings, and you laugh when you should weep and groan. And you should fear the promises and warnings, you should bow to the Lord and repent and turn from sin, but you sit and mock my words and messengers, doubting your return to us. You sit there, mindlessly laughing.